ever wondered why so many people are choosing to build their own PCs? Well, today you're about to find out. Imagine for a moment you're a chef. You have specific dietary needs, unique tastes, and a certain way you like your food prepared. Now wouldn't it be better to prepare your own meals tailored to your requirements, rather than relying on pre-prepared food? Just like cooking, building your own PC offers a similar level of personalization and satisfaction. Firstly, building your own PC can be a cost-effective venture. Pre-built systems often come with a premium price tag for the convenience they offer. However, when you choose to build your own, you have the power to decide where your money goes. You can allocate your budget to the components that matter most to you, whether it's a high-end graphics card for flawless gaming, or a super-fast solid-state drive for quick boot times and snappy performance. Secondly, building a PC gives you the freedom to customize. You're not confined to the specifications of off-the-shelf models. Want more memory for multitasking? Go for it. Need extra storage for your extensive game library? No problem. The world of PC components is your oyster, allowing you to build a machine that perfectly suits your needs. Next, there's the learning opportunity. Building your own PC is a hands-on project that can significantly boost your understanding of how computers work. You'll get to know the function of each component and how they interact with one another. This knowledge can be invaluable, especially when it comes to troubleshooting issues or upgrading components in the future. Lastly, let's talk about performance. A custom-built PC often outperforms pre-built models, especially in the realms of gaming and heavy-duty tasks like video editing or 3D rendering. By selecting each component carefully, you can create a powerful machine that delivers top-notch performance tailored to your specific needs. So now that you know why it's beneficial, are you ready to learn how to build your own PC? Before the building begins, you need to gather all the necessary components. First up, we have the case. This is the shell that will house all your hardware. It's important to ensure that your case is compatible with the size of your motherboard and that it has enough room for all your components. Next in line is the motherboard. This is essentially the nervous system of your PC where all your components will connect. Make sure your motherboard is compatible with your processor and memory. Speaking of the processor or CPU, this is the brain of your PC. It's responsible for executing all the tasks on your computer, so choose wisely based on your needs. Gamers and heavy-duty users might opt for something with more power. Then we have the memory, or RAM. This is your computer's short-term memory. The more RAM you have, the more tasks your computer can handle at once, so don't skimp on this if you're planning on multitasking or running heavy programs. Next, you'll need storage. This is your computer's long-term memory. You have two choices here, a hard drive, HDD, or a solid-state drive, SSD. SSDs are faster and more reliable, but HDDs are cheaper and offer more storage. Choose based on your needs and budget. The power supply unit, or PSU, is responsible for supplying power to all your components. Make sure it has enough wattage to support all your components and that it's compatible with your case and motherboard. Finally, we have the graphics card, or GPU. This component is responsible for rendering images on your screen. If you're a gamer, or plan on doing any kind of video editing or 3D modeling, you'll want a powerful GPU. Once you have all these components, you are ready to start the building process. The first step in the assembly process is putting together the motherboard. Let's dive right in, shall we? The motherboard is essentially the backbone of your PC. It's where all the magic happens, connecting all your components together and allowing them to communicate with one another. First on the agenda is installing the CPU, or central processing unit. This is the brain of your computer. It's a delicate piece of kit, so handle with care. You'll notice on one side of the CPU, there are some gold triangles. These need to align with the corresponding triangles on the CPU socket on the motherboard. Gently drop the CPU into place. It should fit snugly with no force necessary. Next up, we have the RAM, or random access memory. This is your PC's short-term memory, where it stores data that it needs quick access to. Find the RAM slots on your motherboard. They're the long, thin slots usually placed to the right of the CPU. Open the clips on either side of the slots. Align the notch on your RAM stick with the notch in the slot, 
and apply even pressure until the clips snap back into place. The final part of the motherboard assembly is the CPU cooler. This helps to dissipate heat and keep your CPU at a safe operating temperature. Apply a small amount of thermal paste, about the size of a pea, to the top of the CPU. Then, place the cooler on top, making sure it aligns with the mounting points on the motherboard. From there, simply screw it into place. Remember, while assembling your motherboard, it's important to stay grounded. This helps to prevent any static electricity from damaging your components. You can do this by regularly touching a metal part of your PC case, or by wearing an anti-static wrist strap. With the motherboard assembled, it's time to place it into the case. But that, my friends, is a story for our next scene. Stay tuned. Now, let's get that motherboard and power supply installed in the case. As we move forward with our PC building journey, we're now ready to secure the motherboard and power supply into our computer case. You'll want to make sure you're working on a clean, flat surface with plenty of light. Remember, patience is key here. Let's start with the motherboard. Carefully align the motherboard with the standoffs in the case. The standoffs are small brass spacers that lift the motherboard off the case to prevent any electrical shorts. Once aligned, you can start securing the motherboard with the screws provided with your case. Tighten them, but not too tight. You don't want to damage the motherboard. Next up is the power supply unit, or PSU. This is what will provide power to all of your components. Most cases have a bottom-mounted PSU placement, but check your case's manual if you're unsure. Slide the PSU into its spot with the fan facing down and towards the vent. This setup ensures that the fan draws in cool air from outside the case and pushes the hot air out. Once it's in position, secure it with the screws that came with the PSU. Now, it's time to connect the PSU to the motherboard. You'll find a large 24-pin connector on the PSU. That's your main power connector, and it plugs into a corresponding slot on the motherboard. There's also a smaller 8-pin connector. This one will power the CPU, and it plugs into the top of the motherboard. Don't worry if you have extra cables left over from your PSU. These are for your other components like your hard drives, SSDs, and graphics card. We'll deal with those in the next step. And there you have it. Your motherboard and power supply are now snugly installed and ready to power your custom-built PC. Remember, every build is unique, so don't be disheartened if things don't go smoothly the first time. With those in place, we're ready to connect everything together. The next step is to connect all the components together. First off, we're going to link the motherboard to the power supply. Look for a large 24-pin connector on your power supply. You can't miss it. This big guy is responsible for providing power to the motherboard. Firmly insert it into the corresponding port on the motherboard. You'll hear a satisfying click when it's seated correctly. Next, we'll connect the CPU power. It's typically a smaller 8-pin connector from your power supply. Find it and plug it into the designated port on your motherboard. This supplies power to your processor, the brain of your machine. Now, let's move on to the storage drives. These could be hard drives or solid state drives depending on what you're using. They usually connect via SATA cables. One end plugs into a SATA port on your motherboard and the other end goes into your drive. Remember, data and power cables both need to be connected for the drive to work. The power cable comes from the power supply. Finally, we'll install the graphics card, the powerhouse behind your gaming visuals. Locate the PCIe slot on your motherboard usually the longest one, and gently insert the graphics card. Once it's in, you'll need to secure it with a screw to the case. Don't forget to connect the power cables to your graphics card. Some cards require a 6-pin connector, others an 8-pin, and some even require both. And there you have it. All the components are now connected. It's a bit like a puzzle, isn't it? But instead of a pretty picture, you get a high-performance gaming machine. Remember, Always refer to your component manuals if you're unsure about any steps. They have detailed diagrams and instructions to help you out. Now that everything is connected, we're ready to close up the case and start the setup process. After all the hardware is in place, it's time to set up the system. We've assembled our machine, and now we're ready to breathe life into it. The first step is to install the operating system. You can choose from a variety of options, but for many, the go-to is Microsoft Windows. To do this, you'll need a bootable USB drive with the Windows installer. 
plug it into your newly built PC, power up, and your system should recognize it as a bootable device. Follow the prompts, and before you know it, you'll be looking at a fresh Windows desktop. Next up, drivers. These are the software that allows your hardware to communicate effectively with your operating system. Your motherboard and graphics card will come with a CD containing the necessary drivers, but it's generally best to head to the manufacturer's website to download the latest versions. Install these, and your hardware will be running at peak performance. It's also essential to make sure your BIOS is up to date. The BIOS, or Basic Input Output System, is the software that interfaces between your hardware and your operating system. You can usually update this by going to your motherboard manufacturer's website, downloading the latest BIOS, and flashing it onto your motherboard. Once all of that is done, it's time to fine-tune. Open up your resource monitor and check that your CPU and memory are functioning correctly. Run a few stress tests to ensure your system is stable. A good one to try is Prime95, which will push your CPU to its limits and help identify any potential issues. If you're a gamer, consider running a few benchmark tests on your graphics card to ensure it's performing as expected. And there you have it. You've gone from a pile of components to a fully functioning self-built PC. You've installed your operating system, updated your drivers and BIOS, and ensured everything is running smoothly. With the setup complete, you are now the proud owner of a self-built PC. To wrap things up, let's quickly recap the steps we've gone through today. We began by discussing the benefits of building your own PC. It's not just about saving money, though that's certainly a perk. It's also about customizing your machine to your exact needs and preferences. Whether you're a hardcore gamer, a graphic designer, or just someone who enjoys the process of creation, building your own PC offers a level of satisfaction that buying off the shelf just can't match. Next, we delved into the exciting part, gathering your components. We talked about how to choose the right parts for your needs, from the motherboard and processor, to the RAM, storage, and graphics card. Remember, it's important to do your research and ensure compatibility between parts to avoid any nasty surprises down the line. Then we moved on to assembling the motherboard. This is where you start to see your PC taking shape. We guided you through installing the CPU, attaching the cooler, and inserting the RAM. It's a delicate process, but with a steady hand and attention to detail, you'll get through it just fine. We continued with installing the motherboard and power supply into your case. This is where your build starts to look like a real computer. We discussed how to securely mount the motherboard and connect the power supply, making sure everything is aligned correctly. After that, we connected the components. This involves plugging in your storage devices, graphics card, and any additional peripherals you might have. We touched on the importance of cable management, not just for aesthetics, but also for airflow and ease of maintenance. Finally, we walked you through setting up your PC. This includes installing an operating system, drivers, and any software you need. We also talked about how to troubleshoot common problems and ensure everything is running smoothly. And there you have it, the entire process of building your own PC. It may seem daunting at first, but with a bit of patience and perseverance, you'll find it's an incredibly rewarding experience.